Hello, uh, we are live in Zoom and Facebook now. Uh, welcome to the webinar. My name is Raimo. I'm head of partnerships at the residency team. And today we are going to have a very interesting uh, webinar about uh, starting your Estonian e uh, your uh, European or Estonian cross-border business using e-residency. And we have two lovely guests today, Martin from e-residency hub and Vivian from Transervice. Uh, just a couple of um, quick uh, notes for the beginning. First of all, uh, as we expect quite a big number of uh, participants, um, I kindly ask you to um, um, add your questions to the Q&A section in the Zoom uh, so that um, we can uh, see what is the most important and interesting uh, things for you and we can ask them from Martin and Vivian. As we may expect quite many questions, unfortunately we may not be able to answer all of them as the time frame is limited. We encourage you to um, search for additional information from e-residency hub and transfer rights channels as well as uh, from e-residency website and knowledge base. Um, another um, thing I would love to mention is that um, because of the COVID crisis, uh, many Estonian embassies were, clo uh, were uh, more difficult to reach you know, during the COVID crisis. Uh, I'm happy to say that nearly all Estonian embassies uh, that give out uh, e-residency cards are now opened. So if you have already uh, applied for e-residency and you should, your uh, digital ID card should be already in the embassy or pickup location, then uh, I think it's a good time to start planning to pick, pick it up if uh, traveling in your country or your uh, neighboring country actually is allowed already. So, but uh, please be aware that uh, you need to uh, uh, agree an appointment with an embassy to pick up your card. But we encourage you to contact them so that uh, you can start um, operating your uh, e-residency business soon. So welcome one more time and um, I am going to give the floor to Martin Lan from e-residency hub who is going to give you the first overview why to have Estonian company through e-residency and all, at all and how to start it. Thank you very much Raimo. I uh, hope that everybody can hear me and welcome to everybody. It's uh, such a pleasure to see so many people attending. Um, my name is Martin Lan. I'm from a company called e-residency hub and, and our company is, is one of the service providers to the e-residency community. Um, the services that we provide uh, mainly come in, in two parts. Uh, one of them is we uh, help you, uh, we facilitate the process of establishing or founding the Estonian company once you have received your e-residency identification documents. And once that uh, company has been established, we can offer you accounting services because every company obviously needs to keep accounts. And at the same time, we serve as your a local contact point. Having a local contact point is something which is mandatory by Estonian law. So in short, all companies which are managed from somewhere else who have management board members who are not living in Estonia, they need to have that contact point. So, so we, are, we are one of the companies that, that offer these services. And we have been uh, in business um, now for uh, for two years and and we are happy that almost uh, more than 700 uh, e-residents have decided at one point or another to to use us as their assistants as the facilitators as their guides in the process of, of setting up and managing an estonian company um what i'm gonna do is go, i'm going to walk you through the process of, of setting the company up in fact, the, the process itself, from your point of view, takes no more than 15, 20 minutes. But there are a couple of other steps that take place sort of uh, behind the scenes. So uh, I'm going to walk you through this. But before we start with actually the step-by-step -step, uh, process, just a couple of words. Uh, first of all, the company that you can found in Estonia is a, a regular private limited company as these exist throughout the world. Uh, it is not a, there is no such thing as a specific e-company 
or a virtual company. It is a, it is a regular bricks and mortar company that has, is registered and that has all the properties that, that all other companies in Estonia have. The only difference being that you can do this without coming to Estonia, without being an Estonian resident, you can identify yourself using the uh, e-residency uh, card. But now uh, let's get uh, uh, down to the, uh, to the actual facts. I'm gonna share my screen with you. Um, okay, so now if you uh, join the, uh, our website, e-residency hub website at erhub.ee, then you can see at the top uh, right corner, uh, there is a button that says start a company. So in all, after you have gone through all the details, you have, you, you have become sure that this is what you want to do, this is where you press. So you press the button start a company. And uh, the first step that you have to do is you have to choose a company name. Uh, every company needs to have a name. And uh, the uh, interface here uh, enables you to check whether such a name already exists or not. Because obviously you cannot uh, have a company with a similar name that something that already exists. I'll give you an example. If you go here and you uh, put a very uh, well-known soft drink uh, for a company name and you click check availability, then what happens is that the system says that these uh, trademarks and names already exist and it says you cannot proceed with your selected name. So too bad guys, those of you that wanted to set up another Coca-Cola, uh, you're a couple of hundred years too late. So this, this uh, cannot be done. But now uh, let's say you try another name, you put uh, another amazing name such as, well, let's say amazing group, I think this is a, a great name for a company. And again, you check the availability of this name by pressing this. And now, as you can see, uh, this name is available. At the same time, there are similar names or trademarks either in Estonia or in the EU in general. You can see here the different uh, companies or trademarks that exist, but nevertheless, you can still continue. So you can click continue to sign up anyways. Um, so it is simply a warning saying that uh, similar names exist. Uh, now, uh, the second page is where you have to enter company details. I've already uh, done this uh, in the sample case. So uh, what you have to here enter is basically your data, your first name, last name, your Estonian ID code, which is something which is uh, written on your uh, e-residence card, and your country of residence, where you actually live, your address, your zip code, phone number, and your email. Now, uh, there is one very important point here to keep in mind, is that if you set up an Estonian company, then the fact that Estonian business environment is, is quite transparent, then you have to keep bear in mind that all this information, uh, your name, uh, your address, uh, all these inf this information will be publicly available through the Estonian uh, business registry. So please bear in mind that, that uh, you, 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 don't, you, you cannot keep uh, too many secrets. Uh, having entered this, uh, you also need to select uh, members of the board, uh, these are automatically filled if it is a one-man company. So these applicant uh, data is automatically copied also to the board member data. You can change it if you want, but the idea of the, having a member of the board is this. Every company in Estonia needs to have a member of the board, at least one. You can have many, but, but at least one. Secondly, uh, the member of the board uh, needs to be able to give digital signatures if you want to set up the company online. And uh, it is also important to keep in mind that members of the board are the people who are responsible for the company. They have the right to represent the company. They have the right to sign documents uh, on behalf of the company. They are the, the, the people have, that have the, the designated rights, all of them. Uh, at the same time, and as always, the coin has two sides and the other side being 
that these people also are responsible for what the company does. Uh, whether it is uh, the statements that the tax returns or whether it is uh, any obligations to business partners or debts, the members of the board are the ones that are responsible for the decisions that they make. Uh, if you want to know more about details what the members of the board are, there's a question mark. You click and then you can read more. Uh, there's a button that says add a board member, so if you wish to have more than one, you can add them. Uh, there is a, uh, this is uh, also something that we require. So if, if anybody from the board members is a, an important person, if you will, either a, a government minister or, or somebody with a, with a political or government affiliation, you need to indicate that. Same applies for family members. So these are the boxes that you need to also fill. So once again, you appoint the members of the board and then you scroll down uh, to shareholders. Shareholders are, well, the owners of the company. Uh, shareholders are the one who put money in. Shareholders are the one who, if all goes well, uh, take money out, including the profit and everything. So they are the owners. And uh, as, as, it, as is the case with members of the board, also with shareholders, you can have more than one. Uh, you can have as many as you like. Again, as long as these people are all physical persons with a, a possibility to give electronic signatures. Uh, this is when, this is how you, you, can, you can establish the company online. As a side note, if you want to have shareholders who are either other companies, let's say you want to establish a subsidiary or a daughter company, etc., cetera, um, or if some of your shareholders are people who do not have e-residency, then this can also be done, but this has to be done at an Estonian notary. So if this is what you want, uh, you can get in touch with us and we can represent you at the notary. But, but let's keep this as a side remark for the time being. Uh, so again, you can have more than one shareholders. Uh, if you have more than one, then uh, the number of shares has to come together to 100%. So if you have two shareholders, you can have ownership split 50-50 or you can have ownership split 80, 20, or any other uh, percentage in between. So uh, it has to tally up to 100 at the end of the day. Also, the shareholders need to inform us if they are uh, politically affiliated people, or if their family members or business partners are such people. Uh, after having filled this in as well, you have to choose also a company contact email. Company contact email is obligatory. You cannot start a company without the company email. I would recommend that uh, as a, you, you create a separate uh, email address for the company and you do not put your personal address there. The reason is coming back to transparency, all this data will be publicly available. And uh, quite often after uh, establishing the companies, people do get some advertising. This is an unfortunate side effect of the digital world. We put these people, these, this, this information is made public and, and companies that wish to advertise to newly established companies sometimes do that. Uh, so please keep, keep that in mind. Uh, it is not us who is uh, somehow leaking your information, but it is simply made public in the Estonian business registry. As a last point, uh, and this is again uh, a part of the know your customer and, and uh, also uh, rules against uh, uh, money laundering, etc. So if your company has other beneficiaries, if there are people that are not nominated either as shareholders or board members, but who control the company in one way or another, uh, then you have to indicate who these people are, uh, you know, by, by clicking yes, and, and giving their, their data. Uh, so this is phase uh, step two, uh, filling in the company details. Once you've done that, you can go to the next step, which is uh, step three. This is where you give us uh, uh, a description of your business. Uh, every company in Estonia needs to have a field of activity uh, registered. Um, because when you start a company, we assume that you know what you're gonna do. 
whether it's going to be consulting or IT uh, development or selling something. Uh, so there is a list of a uh, couple of uh, more popular uh, business activities that e-residents have. This is not an exhaustive list. So uh, the list is actually much longer. So if your business idea or what you want to do is not here, what you can simply do is you can click, tick this box here and you can just uh, write with your own words what you plan to do and we will appoint the field of activity uh, for you. Now, uh, this gets asked quite a lot. So the, the answer is, uh, if your company has many fields of activity or if your company now has one, but a year later you decide you wanna start doing something entirely different, then that's fine. Uh, you can always add these fields of activity and it is most important to have your main field of activity indicated at the beginning. Uh, and then we ask you to describe your business uh, in uh, your own words. The more, you, the more you can give us, the better. But in this example, the person is uh, trying to establish a consulting business in the, in the field of ISO certification. And now about the main clients. Um, what we mean here mostly is whether you are selling to physical people or companies. So whether it's B2C or B2B, uh, and whether these companies are in the EU, whether they are outside of the EU. So again, a brief introduction of who your clients are uh, is, is, is also something that we need before we can onboard you. So you, you enter this data and you click continue, which takes you to uh, section four, which is uh, you have to choose a package. Now, uh, unfortunately, uh, our services also are offered in exchange of money, uh, as most businesses uh, do in the world. So we have currently four packages that you can choose from. I'm not going to go too much uh, into the detail, but you can read about it uh, on our website later. But anyway, this is the place where you end up selecting the package that you want to start out with. You can always change your package by just sending us an email saying, look, I, I need to either upgrade or downgrade but you, you select your package here. Um, and then uh, as we are cooperating with TransferWise and, and um, uh, Vivian will, will, will go through their services in a minute, but you can uh, tick a box here saying that you're interested in opening a TransferWise account and we can send you more detailed instructions about how to go about. It. So this is uh, step four. And once you've completed that, you come to uh, what is uh, almost the final step, which is overview and payment. So you can just go through to see that all the data is correct. If you find that something is incorrect, then you can always go back and, uh, and make the relevant changes. There is one important part here, uh, share capital. Uh, I hope everybody can see my screen. Uh, the share capital of an Estonian company is minimum 2,500 euros. Now, the beauty or the, the difference between Estonia and, and many other countries, which I believe is a, is a competitive advantage of, of, uh, to Estonia, is the fact that you can start your company without actually paying that capital in. You can, it will be uh, nominally there. Uh, uh, those of you with uh, accounting backgrounds, it is uh, accounted for as a receivable from the shareholders. So you can delay the down payment uh, for a long time um, and you can start your business uh, without putting this money in. Um, a couple of words about the share capital more. Uh, you will eventually have to pay that in by the time you wish to pay dividends. So if your company has been successful, and you have generated profit over the months and years, then before you, that, that profit can be taken out of the company, uh, the share capital has to be paid in. And the second comment about share capital is that share capital is not a cost. You do not lose this money. It will not, you, the government doesn't take it away uh, and it will not be blocked somehow on your account. Uh, you can use this money uh, to make your business expenses uh, from the moment you pay it in. So it's your money. Uh, at, at one point, it simply needs to be paid into the company account. So 
you go through, you make sure all the data is correct about the applicants, about the board members, about the shareholders, about the package that you have chosen. And then, as always with internet uh, businesses, you need to agree to terms and conditions. And once you have done that, uh, you have uh, the buttons for payment. So we take uh, Visa and, and MasterCard. If you don't have a Visa or MasterCard, uh, we also offer the possibility to pay by PayPal or also by wire transfer. So if you don't have a credit card available, please write to us uh, at info at erhub.ee and we can send you uh, information. Now, uh, please bear in mind that the uh, setting up of the company uh, has a certain uh, one-time costs. Uh, uh, the main one-time cost is the state fee, which is 190 euros. So this is uh, the fee that you pay, you pay to us using your credit card, and we will then forward this information uh, to the Estonian business registry. Uh, we also charge a small fee for, for, for keeping the system up and help you. That would be 30 euros uh, one-time fee. And then at the end, uh, whichever package you choose, uh, the first month you pay also at the uh, setting up of the company. So uh, this is uh, the process. Together with the talk, it took me about 15 minutes. I, I don't suppose it takes you a lot longer than that. Um, and once the company, once you do this, once you finalize this process here, you, um, I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, once you finalize the process here, uh, you hand the ball over to us. What we will then do, uh, you will receive, uh, an email, uh, to check, to verify or validate your, uh, company email address. And uh, very soon after filling in this form, well, hopefully during the same business day, you will receive instructions from us about how to click and how to go about signing uh, the company establishment documents on the business registries uh, portal. And then it is, uh, it, the, the request to establish your company will go to an Estonian court. Estonian courts are uh, famous for being quite quick in these matters, uh, we often see companies being established during the same working day or the next working day. But on average, it takes about uh, uh, on average it takes about uh, three working days. So let's say today is a Wednesday. If you set up the company today, then I can. I think it's a pretty reliable guess to say that you should have it by Friday. Uh, if not by Friday, then uh, definitely by, by Monday or Tuesday the next week. Uh, this is the process in a nutshell. Uh, and what happens after you have uh, established a company is that your company will be uh, uh, registered. And I will show you what this uh, looks like. I will also share my screen one more time. So if you go to the uh, Estonian uh, Business Registries website, uh, which we will share with you, and you can see it on the top here as well, uh, then you will have a, a printout. So every company can get this printout online. And what it says here, this is our dear client, uh, Oliver. I'm not sure, Oliver, if you're on the call. If yes, then uh, we wish you all the success continuously. So you have your business name, you have the location of the management board. So uh, as you're not living in Estonia, your actual location of doing business will be indicated here. Uh, this is the email address of the company. And this is the contact person detail. So this is us uh, uh, with our address, after 12 talent. Now, what is important to note is this footnote here. It says, if the management board of a company is located in a foreign state, which is the case with you, the address of the contact person shall be considered the address of the company. So if you make your Estonian companies, I don't know, letterheads, or if you sign contracts, or if you apply for an account with TransferWise, for example, 
your company's address is this Artery 12 Talent. So this is your company's official address in Talent. Also, as I said, transparency is everywhere. So share capital is here. Management board member, uh, meaning the, the director then is, is given here. Uh, and, and some other data about uh, when and how the company was established. So uh, your data will be available uh, to everybody uh, to see, as well as, um, well, you can see the data of any other Estonian company that you can think of, including your competitors, etc. Uh, there is one last page that I want to uh, show you um, before I hand over to, uh, to Vivian. Uh, one uh, second. So, uh, okay, I'm going to share my screen uh, again. Here we go. So if you go to uh, our website and you click articles, um, then you will see uh, how to open an account with TransferWise, what you need to do. You start from this and uh, once you click here, you go to uh, our joint page, uh, which is the joint page of TransferWise and eResidency Hub. Uh, and this is where you can start uh, applying for your TransferWise account. One last point, you need to have your Estonian company established. So you need to wait for these couple of days for the court to decide. And once you have received the company uh, certificate, uh, you can uh, go ahead and start uh, the processes with TransferWise. Having said that, I'm going to uh, hand over uh, to uh, Vivian uh, that can walk you through the magic that TransferWise can do to you. Uh, hey, uh, I have a quick question to Martin as well. Um, based on your experience, uh, what are the most difficult steps or the, for the entrepreneurs when they are starting their Estonian company in this registration and uh, starting up a process what do they should uh, what should they definitely think through before actually starting the process yeah. uh, yes uh, one of the key things that uh, people stumble upon is the name change so it does sometimes happen that you choose a name which doesn't exist yet but there is a similar name let's say you want to start a company that is called top gear and they say, no, 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 there is already such, let's say there is pop gear already available or something. So if it's similar, then the court uh, will reject um, the name and will simply ask you to change. So when that happens, then our customer support will inform you. They say, okay, look, you need to change the name. And what you can then do is you can try to add a word. You can add Top Gear Estonia or Top Gear Global or Top Gear Enterprises, or you try to play with the name. It doesn't cost you anything extra in terms of money, meaning uh, submitting a new name is, is simply a procedure which takes another couple of days of, of court proceeding times. Uh, so that's why if you see that uh, very similar, very similar names exist, like one letter difference, then it might be a wise idea, if you insist on that name, it might be a wise idea to be prepared that it might take longer because there is going to be a ping pong with the court uh, trying to make a name fit. That's one thing. Um, but then again, once again, it doesn't cost you extra. You can always change the name during the establishment process and try different names and see which one goes through. The other point uh, which sometimes confuses clients and, and why I mentioned this specifically is the transparency. So if you do, if you're a freelancer and you're working from home and you give us your home address, then yes, your address, your home address will be available to anybody who Googles your company's name or who bothers to come to the Estonian business registry. So uh, uh, if you are very a private person and you don't want your home address to be available, Please, if you can give a, an office address. If you can give the place where you actually do the work. Uh, it doesn't have to be your home address. It, it can be an address where you, which is still valid. You cannot give a random address like the town hall in your city, but you have to give then an address where you, where you work, for example. That's the other uh, thing that, that sometimes comes to, um, comes to mind. Thanks.
Uh, yeah, so this is, these are the two more important ones. Uh, if, if there are any other uh, glitches or, or questions, then our customer support usually manages to fix them. Mm -hmm. We are going to cover more questions and answers in the end of the presentations. Just a quick note uh, in between, if you have any questions, please do add them to Q&A section. Uh, we may not be able to answer all of them. Uh, but we try to cover the most popular ones, so you can upvote, upvote uh, the questions you consider relevant as well. Uh, and of course, we recommend you to ask directly your questions from Transurbise or from eResidency Hub or from eResidency if you have very case-specific questions. Uh, and one more thing, uh, recording will be available in eResidency YouTube channel a couple of days after the, today's webinar. But uh, yeah. Uh, now, Vivian, your turn. Welcome. Awesome. Thank you, Martin. Thanks, Remo. Hello, everyone. It's great to have you all here. My name is Vivian, and I work on the affiliates and partnerships team here at TransferWise. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar with who we are, we're a global technology business, and essentially, we're building the best way to move money around the world. And really, our mission is to make it cheaper faster and more convenient for anyone needing to send, receive, or spend money all over the world. Um, we actually have over 7 million customers um, and we work with a range of clients. So it can be anyone from a freelancer, um, an SMB business, to larger scale enterprises who are processing thousands of payments a day through our API. I'll go into a bit more detail, um, exactly all our different product features, but first of all, I just wanted to go through and show you how you actually create an account with us and just underline that it's, it's free to create an account on TransferWise and it only takes a couple of minutes, which is, which is great. So I'm just going to now share my screen with you. Hopefully you can all see this all okay with my screen. Perfect. So as you can see here, when you um, click through from e-residency hub, either from the article or from an email that you receive once your company is established and you've opted in to receive more details about TransferWise, you can click through and this is where you can go to register an account with TransferWise. Here you can see, you can either select between a personal account or a business account. In this case, you'd want to select business. This is where you would put your business email address. You can input in a password and your country registration in this case would be Estonia. So here you can click sign up. And here, this is where you fill in your business details. So let's take, for example, awesome Estonian company because that's what we hope all of you will have and this is where you put your registration number so this is what would be provided by e-residency hub and here the business address so this again would be where you would put in the e-residency hub address because this essentially is where your business is registered not where you're operating from next step you would click confirm and this is where you actually choose a category of your business. So I'm just going to take an example of I'm in consulting and I do consulting for IT and that's what I do. will select. And then I might be a design consultant. So this is what you select and you can just use the drop down to best provide a description of your business. And then it's super useful if you do have a website or a social media profile to provide that for us because when our team is checking through the accounts, they can use this information to better understand a bit more about your business. In this case, I'm just going to put an example of mybusiness.com. And also note that we do accept eBay and Amazon seller profiles as well if you want to share that information. So I'll select continue. And this is where you would fill in your own personal details. So in this case, when it looks for home address, this is your actual address. So I'm just going to put the transferwise one here, put in my own details, and then just give an example date of birth. I'm just going to make this up and then click confirm. Let's see if this will work. And then you'll go on to the next stage, 
Well, I will ask you, what would you like to do first? Um, so as mentioned at TransferWise, you can do a multitude of different things. So you can use us for either sending money internationally. And one of the key sort of selling points of our, of our product is that when we convert our customers' money, we always do that at the mid-market exchange rate. Um, what we have found before is that typically if you were to perhaps say, go to your bank um, or use some other providers, they might say, hey, it's, it's commission free, but actually what they do is they add a markup to the exchange rate. So if you were to check on Google or Reuters, you would see a rate, but your bank may provide a slightly different rate, which isn't so good. Here at TransferWise, we always convert your money at the mid-market rate. So that actually helps you save money on any of your conversions. So you can either use us to send money. So a lot of our uh, business customers use it either pay invoices abroad, uh, whether it's to pay suppliers or even remote employees that you may have. Um, you can also receive and hold money. So as Amata mentioned, if you establish your Estonian business, then you may want to have European account details to receive euros into that. Uh, so you can also do that with TransferWise. We offer international account details for the US, Euros, GBP, Australia. Recently, you opened up uh, Singaporean account details and also New Zealand dollars. So you can actually get your own individual business account details for those currencies and you can receive payments in those currencies for free. You can also hold over 50 currencies in the one TransferWise account and convert between them as well. And I'll show you in a bit what that looks like. So let's just say, for example, I want to receive and hold money in this case. Then you'll be taken into our interface. Um, it's also worth noting that as of 15th of June onwards, we are actually going to look at charging for these details. So this does vary from country to country, and this is a, just a one-time fixed fee that you would pay. So it's not a monthly cost or anything, it's just one time. For example, if I'm based in the UK, I will be paying £16 to open up any international account details. So if I open up all five of them, or if I open up just the Euro account details, then there will be a one-off fee of £16 to do so. Um, in the US, that's $31, and it differs by country. And we would have information on all of our different landing pages, depending on what country you're from, as to what that charge would be. As you can see here, when you do create your account to keep it secure, we do ask for you to set up an additional layer of verification here, which is essentially a push notification that you would send to know that when you're logging into your account, it's actually you. But in this case, I'm going to close it, so I'm not going to complete it here. But this is sort of our whole interface, and this is what you can do within TransferWise. So here, what you can see is you can open a balance. So this is where you would click to open a balance and then it would come up and this is the details that you would fill out. But what I'm going to do now is actually just show you my own personal account. So just bear with me. I'm going to stop the share and just log into my own personal details so I can actually show you a bit closer how exactly this looks. So just bear with me a second. So now I'm just being asked to approve the login on my phone. Perfect, now I can share my screen. So here you can see the different account details that I would have. So this is where I have the balances within my account. just loading up and here you can see this is where I would actually be able to activate and access my different account details so in this case for example with euros what you can see here is that you have your own account holder 
this is your bank code or SWIFT code, and these are the details that you would need to supply to someone if they wanted to send a euro payment into your euro account. So you provide them with your IBAN and your SWIFT details, and also this is the address. So as you can see, the bank that you would be holding the money with is with our partner bank in Brussels, in Belgium. And these are the details that you would be sharing with anyone who wishes to send you money in euros. You can also then look to add euros into your accounts, whether you want to fund that via bank transfer or with a debit card or credit card, you can do so. And that's how you would activate those details. And here you can just see how you can have balances for the multiple currencies that I mentioned. So that is these all these different areas. And as you can see, it's unique and individual to each of your own businesses. What you can also do here is, I want to talk you through our send money proposition as well. So say you wanted to send some money to pay for um, an invoice that you've got. Here you can actually go click to send money. And here, this is where you can specify how much money you would like to send in your source currency and where to. So if, for example, I wanted to send pounds to euros, I can do this here. And this is quite interesting is that you can see the breakdown of our fee. So you can see here the different costs that would be charged dependent on how you look to fund your transfer. So if you do as if you fund your transfer from your bank account, that's the fee that we would look to charge. If you're funding it from your debit or credit card, then there's a slightly higher fee. And that just basically reflects what the true cost is to TransferWise as well. So you can make the best option and choice for yourselves. Another handy thing is you can actually look to compare the price as well and just see, you know, how, how does TransferWise compare to some other providers that we collect this information off? So you can see information here. So TransferWise in this case, is the cheapest option along with Monzo who is one of our banking partners and here you can compare this to some of the bank other bank partners where we can let collect information from and you can see estimated arrival time of when the money would arrive as soon as you fund it so if I was to pay in the pounds and transfer wise within four hours my euro recipient should receive those euros in their account and then what you would do is you would set up your recipient details so you would need your recipients bank account details you would review it and then you would just need to pay for your transfer as soon as we receive the funds then we can go and process the transfers on your behalf typically up to 25 percent of our transfers are instant so as soon as you pay it into us we will pay it out to the recipient straight away so just going back to the balance details as well what you can see here and what we have found for a lot of our users is that um, having a direct debit option is, is super useful. So for example, you may be a business and you have a cloud service provider that you pay on a monthly basis. What you could look to do is you can actually create a direct debit so they can automatically pull the funds from your account and you can set up exactly how much you want to, to pay each time. So you can just select direct debit. At the moment, this is available for our Euro account, our Australian dollar and GBP account. And we are looking at building and functionality for our other accounts in the future. So if I wanted to select euros, this is where I would see, say you would give these bank details to the company you're paying, and then they would be able to automatically direct debit from your account. This is particularly useful for, we found like a lot of Amazon sellers, where when you create your account on Amazon, sometimes Amazon will want to verify that the bank account details that you put in to withdraw your money and earnings is actually a valid account. So what they do is they make a micro deposit, so they might put in 1p and then try and retract that money back out again. In that case, because we have this direct debit feature now, this allows them to validate that this is actually an account that works and you'll be able to receive in payments from, for example, Amazon as a platform into your TransferWise Euro account. You can also see a history as well. So uh, for a lot of our business customers, they would like to see historical information on, you know, 
how many transfers have I made and download this to CSVs. So you can actually select a specific date range here. This goes back up to uh, 365 days. If you need transfer history for longer than that, then you can get in touch with our business customer support team who will be able to run a report for you. There is also uh, our business debit card. So we realize that as a business user, if you have European account details, you kind of want to have a card as well to be able to spend the money wherever you go. So if you do want to access our business debit card, this is currently available for residents in the US, Europe, UK, Singapore, and Australia. So unfortunately, if you are a resident in any other country outside of that, it wouldn't be available to you. But if you do use the e-residency hub um, address for the card to be delivered, then they can help to support you by forwarding on the card to you in the actual country of residence that you live. So here, for example, I can actually say, I want to, to get my card. And here, this is where you can enter your card delivery address. So you have two different options here. Say for an example, you are uh, based in France, but you've established your Estonian business. Instead of having your car delivered to the e-residency hub address, you could actually state to have, I want to have my car delivered to my French address so that you can have it straight away. So this is where you can input in your details here. So as long as you're in one of the few countries that we have highlighted, you're able to get a business uh, debit card, then you can audit delivery straight there. Um, what we will need to have though, for you to be able to receive your card is, we will have to verify your account. Now, typically we would need to have ID details and proof of address, but this does vary from country to country, dependent on the different regulations that are in place. Um, but as long as you filled out as much information on your profile already, then normally this is quite quick. It can take up to three to four business days for your account to be verified. In some cases, it is instant, dependent on the country that you're in. You also need to, before you can access our debit card, you need to add money into your balances. Um, and that's just not a fee that we're charging, but essentially for you to be able to use your card, you need to have money on your card, hence why we ask you to top up your balance with some money. And there is a minimum amount. So for Euro, euros, for example, you need to add 20 euros into your account and I can select I'm paying in euros. And then essentially that 20 euros belongs to you. It's not a fee that we're charging. You'll have that 20 euros in your account so you can go straight away and start spending on your business debit card. So I'm just gonna say I'll do it later. Um, another feature I wanted to also highlight is that we do have integrations with a few accounting softwares. So we currently have integrations with Xero and QuickBooks. So you can look to sync your TransferWise balance accounts with those providers. And I do know that Martin is going to mention that uh, as of September, there will also be an integration with Envoice, but you can go through that in more detail. So if I did want to sync it, my balance with either Xero or QuickBooks currently, you can select the connect to accounting. And this is where you'd be able to select which accounting tool you want to connect with. You would put in your connection or email details and select which balances you would like to connect from TransWise to your uh, accounting provider of choice. Also, another feature that we have in beta at the moment is as a business owner, we do know that sometimes you want to have other people accessing your account. So one feature that we have built out so far, which is in beta, is offering um, uh, viewer access to people. So essentially what you could do is you could add another user to be able to view your account. Now, as a viewer, what you can do is you can download statements, view reporting and receipts, but you would not be able to action any payments on behalf of the business. So as an owner of the account, you would still have to go in and process all the payments yourself. But what we are building on top, and it's a feature that we are working on and will be coming soon, is admin roles, where you can actually select, would you like to have this particular person be able to make payments on your behalf 
where you would also have to approve them or do they get direct approval straight away? So this is just another feature that we have available. Uh, so what I wanted to, to highlight here when it comes to TransferWise for Business, when actually creating an account, is that there are some countries where we won't be able to open or offer a business account to you. Uh, this does differ. So for example, uh, unfortunately, residents in, in the likes of India, uh, Pakistan and Brazil can't at the moment open up uh, TransferWise for Business account details. We also do have an acceptable use policy as well. So if your business is within sort of the tobacco industry or within cryptocurrency, or uh, I believe even in sort of like alcohol as well, unfortunately, we would not be able to onboard you as a customer on TransferWise, but you can go through sort of the process. And if we are unable to unfortunately take you on as a customer, you would receive an email notification sort of letting you know as to the reasons why that is happening. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen here. Um, Vivian, uh, we, have, uh, we have got, uh, of course, many questions regarding TransferWise. There is one I would love to ask right away. It's about uh, automated regular payments to partners or salary payments. Are, is it possible to pay regularly? Uh, or automate the process or do you have this thing planned in the future? So unfortunately at the moment you can't set up like a standing order to be able to do this automatically but we do offer either a batch payment service which essentially is a CSV file that you can download and upload at every month for example um, and you could save that as a template so if it's the same payments every month you could do that uh, we also do have an open API that a lot of our clients do use to be able to automate a lot of their payments. So you can set that up through the API. Um, I also saw there were a few questions around the share capital certificate as well. So as Marta mentioned, we do support uh, provision of that as well. So uh, to be able to get that certificate from, from TransferWise, um, you need to first of all make a deposit of the 2,500 euros into your business euro account within TransferWise. And this has to be made by the shareholder of the business. Um, and when you add in that payment, if you can add in a reference, that is, this is the share capital contribution. You can then get in touch with our business, business customer service team and they'll be able to provide you with the documentation to provide proof of this. And another hot topic seems to be payment gateway. Do you have do you provide payment gateway, or on the other hand, uh, if you don't, uh, are there any payment gateways you are cooperating with or have uh, technical integrations? Yes. So when it comes to to payment gateway, so Transwise is not a payment gateway, but as mentioned, you can sort of use our international account details, especially in the case of uh, online sellers, they use this for receiving payments from the likes of either like Stripe or PayPal, you can receive payments from those payment gateways into your account to receive those funds without any fees. And then you can convert it at the mid market rate and then withdraw it into whatever bank account you require. Okay, thanks for now. Awesome. Uh, so that's actually sort of the, the main sort of areas I wanted to cover with, with TransferWise for Business. So if there's sort of any other questions, then we can look to address that uh, within the Q&A as well. Thanks, Vivian. And we give the floor back to Martin, I guess. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Raimond. Thank you, Vivian, for a very thorough and, 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 and excellent presentation. Uh, I know I'm a little bit squeezed for time, so I'll, I'll be very quick. Uh, I noticed that Q&A, there was a very correct remark, is that if you uh, are our client and you buy accounting services from us, then the common practice is that our accountant is given these viewing rights to your account, so we don't need to pester you with, uh, bank, with transferwise statements every month, but we can withdraw these uh, by ourselves. Um, uh, I'm going to go very, very uh, quickly into some of the, uh, the accounting processes that, uh, that we have uh, from the point of view of the client. 
I, I will share my screen again. Give me a second. Okay, so uh, what we use uh, is a, a software called Envoice. And uh, if you log on to Envoice together with uh, being our client, you get, you get access to, to Envoice and you get your own account. Uh, Envoice is used for uh, shifting your invoices between you and, and us. So if you buy something, you receive an invoice, you can simply, you get an email, direct, like customized email for you, you forward it and it will be automatically uh, uh, appear here in Envoice, it'll be digitized and it will be available to your accountant to see. Uh, we also have an, a mobile app, so if you have paper receipts, you pay for something uh, with your card, you receive a paper slip, then you can, um, uh, you can use the app uh, to, make a, um, uh, to make a photo of that receipt, and again, it will be automatically uploaded. You can create your sales invoices here as well on Envoice. And as Vivian mentioned, uh, we, uh, we are always as well growing and developing and building something new. So we will have an integration with TransferWise. So it will appear on the dashboard here uh, soon enough. Uh, September is the current uh, deadline that we hope to uh, be able to meet. Uh, so by September, you will have a TransferWise window here as well. You can see your bank balance, you can see the statements, and you can also pay your invoices by clicking and saying pay by TransferWise. So, so the invoice uh, dashboard will be available uh, for you. Now, uh, just, just to show you the uh, invoices, if you send uh, your purchase invoices uh, uh, to Envoice, then they will appear um, here. It's going to be uh, sort of a list of, of the invoices. And let's say you want to see one particular invoice here, you click view. Uh, and there you have the invoice data, the amount, and the original PDF file uh, for your information here as well. You don't need to keep the originals. So the originals can, uh, the copies can be kept here at Envoice, and this is, uh, this is perfectly enough. So receipts as well, you take a photo, you make sure that they reach Envoice, and then basically uh, you don't need to keep the originals anymore. Uh, with sales invoices, it's the same. You can create them here in Envoice. I'm not going to demo that right away because we're a bit short of time. Um, um, but, but in principle, this is the uh, environment where you can uh, handle your invoicing, and, and we will be able to see all that. And also, uh, Envoice is a tool for you to create your expense reports and your travel reports. So if you buy something with your own money, but it is something that you use for company purposes, then you can make an expense report and, and compensate yourself uh, or whoever made the expense. And of course, if you go on a, on a business trip, then, then business trip related expenses can be summarized in a travel report and, and Envoice has a, has a tool to, uh, to create these as well. We also have video tutorials, etc., cetera, available for clients. So if you, uh, if you become a client, uh, there are some intros that you can go through. Once you once you see, once you do you do it once, and then you'll uh, you'll have it uh, at your fingertips, and it's it's not complicated at all. Um, this is pretty much all. Uh, I I think uh, we are exactly at three o'clock as we planned, so we can uh, jump to Q and A. Um, and and I thank you for your attention and I hope I will be able to clarify in case there are questions of which there are many I see. Yes there are many of them and uh, some of them are quite uh, popular. Um, first of all a rather traditional question about uh, business banking. Mm, uh, what's your experience uh, with e-residents and e-residency companies opening up a, a business banking account in so-called traditional banks like Sweet Bank, SEB, something like this. Uh, do you help or assist your customers to apply uh, for the banking account there? And what's your uh, experience? What kind of companies are likely to get a kind of traditional banking account? Yes, I know, thanks, thanks for the question. I know this is a hot topic and a lot of debate is going on. In fact, the, the rules are quite clear. Uh, and I can, I can explain them. So we work with LHV, who is the main banking partner for, for e-resident companies here in Estonia. 
And LHV has quite specific rules. So uh, they, uh, first of all, LH, you can get an LHV account if. So option number one is that if your company has either clients or employees, staff members, or suppliers here in Estonia. So if you actually cooperate with Estonian companies, you buy something from them, you sell something to them on a regular basis, and they can confirm that, then this is a good argument, uh, which usually goes through uh, to get an LHV account. Of course, if you have a board member, if, if somebody that uh, either manages your company or works for your company lives in Estonia, then that is, again, another very valid reason to say, look, I need to pay this person a salary, etc. And you have a clear connection to Estonia. Uh, if you don't, and most e-residents don't have that kind of connection to Estonia, then uh, LHV Bank still can uh, take you on as a client and open you an account if you are a classical uh, digital nomad. So if you are a one-man band that works from... Uh, that basically only uses their laptop to do work, whether it's programming or, 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 I don't know, translating or anything like that. And you can verify that. You can, you can explain that to the bank. Then they often take, open you an account as well. What I, uh, my advice to clients always is when they fill in the applications for the LHV bank account, treat this as a pitch deck to your investors. Give as much information as possible. So don't say, if they ask, what is your business? If you say programming, then, you know, the answer is going to be no. But if you say, we are Java program programmers, we are working on, I don't know, uh, UX, plat UX uh, interfaces. We have worked previously with these and these and these clients. This is my portfolio. These are my LinkedIn sites. These are the contacts of the people that I've worked before. You give them all the stuff there is. And, and, and if you are a so-called digital nomad, one person operation, then it is also possible to get a, an account. Uh, there is also another condition. And the condition is that after, after they make a decision that, yes, we are ready to open you a bank account, you have to physically come here. You have to meet them once. You have to come to the bank and identify yourself. So LHV accounts cannot be acquired uh, online. So there is no online verification. Uh, you have to come here, which is another reason why I give advice to clients. When you do come to Estonia, even if you don't have the company yet, it might make sense to stop by at LHV and show them your passport and tell them that, look, I'm here. I, I, I wish to identify myself and I'm going to sometime in the future, maybe set up a company and apply for a bank account. So, so uh, at least one trip to Estonia is obligatory. Uh, and given the, if, if these conditions are met, then you can get a bank account. If these conditions are not met, then you cannot. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's quite simple. Uh, what we do is we do advise clients with the application. So if the client has prepared the bank account application for LHV, we can take a look at it and we can say, yes, this is sufficiently thorough. Or we can say, yes, Lowell, in these and these sections, you need to provide more information. So uh, more is always better when it comes to bank accounts. Uh, we don't have too much experience with other Estonian banks. Uh, and my suggestion recommendation is to go with LHV first. Uh, that, is, uh, that is my suggestion. What's your experience? Uh, what are the main use cases? Why e-residency company actually needs traditional banking account instead of TransferWise or some other payment service provider? Are there those use cases at all? I honestly, I I don't know. I mean, look, there is a lot of talk going on about uh, you know people wanting a traditional bank account. Part of it is probably you know just traditionalism. Uh, you know, uh, that they can say um, that this is a, an, an actual bank account. Then there is the Estonian IBAN uh, issue, which is rarely, but still sometimes a question. But but overwhelming majority of our clients uh, can manage their business just fine, starting out with TransferWise. Okay, so we continue with the question. There is actually one interesting trending question about Romania. Do you... Romanians have some special obligations, limitations, uh, 
or not? Uh, as the part of EU, I guess not. Uh, or do you have any experience with uh, Romanian uh, EU residents? Multumesc to my Romanian friends. Um, uh, as far as we know, we have several Romanian clients and they have managed to get their accounts just fine. So I, I, I don't think there are any special circumstances considering Romania. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there is also a question about uh, do you support dropshipping companies? We do. We do. Uh, you can you can explore you can get in touch with us um, and and uh, we can provide accounting help for you as well. The, yeah. uh, then uh, one general question I think that is also useful for all the others uh, for those who are actually creating the company now or in the nearest future when do they have to present their first annual report that's a very good question and the, the answer is actually quite simple so if uh, if you set up the company in the second half of the year second half of the year starts from 1st of july so if your company is set up 1st of july until 31st of december then you don't need to submit the first annual report for that particular year. So uh, to be even more clear, if your company is established on the 1st of July this year, then the first ever annual report that you need to submit will be a joint annual report for the years 2020 and 2021. And this report will be due by the 30th of June, 2022. So if you establish the company today, we are still in June. So yes, next year you will be uh, required to submit an annual report for the year 2020, for this year. Even though your company was not active the full year, but you were active uh, more than six months. Uh, another quick question. Do you support also setting up NGO? We do not. Uh, unfortunately, uh, but uh, I believe several other marketplace members do. So uh, Yes, there are. For example, uh, your company in Estonia is definitely one that is he helping to set up NGOs, Silva Hunt as well, mm -hmm. and some others. Uh, uh, for those who are searching for uh, service providers, then we recommend you visit our website and uh, there is a marketplace uh, where you can find a list of different service providers that could help you with different uh, services, company formation, contact person services, accounting, tax and legal advice, as well as uh, fintechs like TransferWise and some others as well. So um, some questions for Vivian as well. We covered already payment gateway. Um, Uh, Estonian IBAN, you do not uh, support or provide that. Um, we, am I correct? Yes, unfortunately, we don't provide Estonian IBANs at the moment. Um, our team are always working on expanding our network of banking partners. So hopefully that is something that we'll be able to do in the future, but it's not on the roadmap currently. Um, but I just want to sort of underline that uh, according to EU law, um, every company should be able to accept uh, details for an IBAN that is from a country within the EEA. Um, so we actually do have a form that you can help to fill in, which then helps our sort of teams to, to speak with these companies and actually better understand as to why exactly they would need Estonian specific uh, details so we can build more of a case together. But unfortunately, right at this moment, we don't uh, provide and support that. Um, and one other thing I wanted to mention, just uh, sort of what Martin mentioned around traditionalism and, and accounts, um, I just wanted to stress and emphasize that with TransferWise, we are also a regulated e-money institution. Um, so your money is kept safe and secure and separate to our own sort of TransferWise account details. Um, and so we do, we do safeguard that money. Um, but it is not part of the financial compensation scheme. So uh, if, say, our banking partner was to go bust, which is unlikely, uh, then your money would not be kept safe. But if there's any other reasons for it, then it would be kept safe. Um, and your money is kept safely and secure, securely within TransferWise. And, and I, I just wanted to clarify that it is possible to 
receive payments from around the world to, to a TransferWise account. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So as long as you provide like the IBAN and SWIFT details uh, to whoever is looking to send the money to you, then we can definitely receive the money in euros into your TransferWise euro account. And, and one more important thing from, from our client's perspective, I think it was very good that uh, Vivian mentioned. So if you are living in US, EU, or there was some other, I think Japan, then you can have the TransferWise card that belongs to your Estonian company delivered directly to you, uh, let's say in your address in US or France or Japan. But if you live somewhere else, then uh, your, the, the, the TransferWise card, which belongs to your Estonian company, uh, needs to be sent to us, needs to be sent to Ahtri12, your company's official address. And then we will take this card and we will forward it to you wherever you are, whether you want to receive it by courier or by registered mail, uh, both of these services are available. Yeah, so just to, to uh, say, so you can receive the TransferWise business card in the US, in Europe, Australia, Singapore, UK. Uh, then uh, another question to Vivian, is it possible uh, to convert or change your current uh, TransferWise account to your newly established Estonian company account? Um, so we would recommend that you create a whole separate uh, new account because if it is a new business account, then it would create a separate profile within that. Unfortunately, at the moment, you can't have multiple businesses within the one profile. It'd be created as two separate ones. Mm -hmm. I would add to that, if you, if you don't mind, that uh, please always, uh, I ask clients to bear in mind that their Estonian company is a different person. It's like a baby. If, you, if, if, the, if the company is established, the baby is born and, and the, pa the baby cannot continue the lives of their parents. So if you have had other businesses or if you have your own bank account, so these are separate, your new Estonian company always starts from zero starts from a blank sheet and, and, and this is where business begins. Uh, another one for Vivian, um, with TransferWise, is it possible as an Estonian company send uh, Euro transfers to another company located outside of the EU with no converting the EU uh, uh, Euro to local currency of the non-European country? So just to clarify, you would like to send euros to a country outside of the EU? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, you should be able to send uh, euros to a country based outside of the EU. It will just have a slightly different charge to if you were sending euros to another country within the EU. Mm -hmm. So you can do that. Okay. It will just have slightly different charges. Then uh, can you please repeat one more time which payment gateways you are actually partnering up with? You mentioned Stripe and PayPal. Are there any others? At the moment, Stripe and PayPal are the main ones that we've seen as the biggest use case mm -hmm. um, so far. Okay. Uh, then um, I have a couple of questions uh, now to Martin. Uh, can you clarify a bit uh, uh, the process or the, the obligations when a company needs to change the address or change the shareholders or add them or the um, board members, what are the main things people need to consider? Okay, uh, changing a name and changing the board members is quite easy. Uh, so basically we need to make a new petition each petition costs 18 euros. This is a state fee. This is not our fee, but a state fee. So if you want to change your name and your uh, board members together, it's 18 euros. If you make one change, changing the name, and then a month later you want to change the board members, then it's you know, twice the 18 euros. Um, when you change the board members, then the new board member also has to be able to give digital signatures. So it would have to be another e-resident or a local person. If that is not possible, then uh, we can do this at the notary. Uh, but, but, but if you want to do it electronically, then yes, you can change it uh, by paying. By, we assist, we prepare the documents, we tell you where to sign, 
and uh, you pay 18 euros. Uh, when it comes to uh, buying and selling your company's shares, uh, then this is something that can be done, needs to be done at a notary in most cases. Uh, we have now this uh, e-notary system, meaning you can give a power of attorney to us through an e-notary, or you can, you can uh, be present at the notary again uh, through uh, electronic channels. Again, both then the buyer and the seller need to be e-residents. Uh, and then it can be done uh, electronically through a notary as well. If, the buy, if either the buyer or the seller is somebody that does not have digital signature or that is a, a company, so they're one company that owns another one, then the process needs to be done here at the notary and we can help, we can facilitate, we can represent you. You don't have to travel to Estonia, but you have to create power of attorney and send them to us uh, either by courier or by mail. And then we take these official papers with apostilles and stamps on them we go to an Estonian notary and we, we formalize the deal. Another question that's also uh, asked many times is, uh, what about changing the service provider? What's the usual process for that? Is it allowed at least uh, at all <laughs> and so uh, on? Yes, okay. Yes, it is allowed. Our standard uh, terms and conditions mean that uh, all our clients are free to leave. Uh, usually there is a 30 day notice, meaning you let us know that you're going to shift your service provider. If you have an ongoing business, meaning if you have accounts with us and, and balances that are outstanding, then we will close the books uh, by the end of the month and uh, we will hand them over to uh, your new accountant. So that is standard procedure. I'm glad to say that it doesn't happen often. Uh, I can't remember really the last time it did happen, but yes, you can you can change the service provider and at the same time if there is an, an e-resident who wants to become your customer and is transferring from other service provider uh, what he or she needs to consider or uh, should um, keep in mind for example accounts and something like this if we take on a new client who has an exi existing business and has an existing accountant then we, we handle this case by case. So the, the previous accountant or the, the company itself needs to provide us with all the accounts, with all the bank statements from the beginning, and, and we verify them. And if there is some work that needs to be done in retrospect, let's say to, to, to get books in order, and we can do this, uh, we will do this at an hourly rate. So we will look at the situation, we'll tell you the price, what it takes to, let's say, set you up, uh, with us and then then it's up to you to decide whether you want to make the, the change or not but it is definitely possible okay uh, then uh, there are some people who are interested in taxes of course um, you can give a few sentences maybe like a general few tips and tricks or the main uh, guidelines uh, but I would love to recommend for for those who are interested in main tax questions uh, to visit the uh, e-residence YouTube channel and uh, like a, around a month ago we had a specific tax webinar about the 10 most uh, frequently asked questions about uh, taxation for Estonian companies so you can get more uh, thorough insight there and of course uh, you can always read the information from our website there is a knowledge base where you can find quite detailed uh, articles about the different taxes uh, and the rules applying for a different kind of company okay uh, so now i'm going to make a, a very very complicated topic into a couple of sentences a solution i could just as well say you know i can i can uh, explain uh, quantum mechanics uh, you know uh, using uh, Finger puppets. Anyway, uh, main, key, main point is the fact that you have an Estonian company, the, the fact that you own this company or that you work for that company and you get some money from that company, whether it is a salary or dividends or anything, does not make you an uh, Estonian tax resident. So you as a person, if you don't live in Estonia, then you remain the tax resident of the place where you live. That's number one. Uh, now, uh, when, it's, when, when you're paying yourself salary, 
when the Estonian company hires you, even if it's your own company and pays your salary, then you don't pay Estonian taxes. You don't pay the Estonian income tax or the social tax or in fact any taxes. And in fact, you don't declare these payments at all in Estonia. You have to declare them at home. And how to do that is something you need to consult with the local tax advisor. Now, if your company makes profit over the years, if your company makes a profit over the years and you wish to take this money out of the company by way of dividend, then uh, before paying the dividend out, 20% uh, is charged as corporate. I repeat, corporate income tax of your company. Best example is if you have accumulated 100,000 euros of profit and you make a decision, fine, I'm gonna take it all out, uh, then 20% immediately goes to the Estonian government by way of corporate tax of your company. And the 80,000 is then paid out to the shareholders. And now it might be the case that these shareholders, wherever they live, let's say they live, one lives in Romania, the other lives in the US, they must declare this as their dividend income uh, from a foreign company. And how this is then uh, taxed at home is again something that uh, relates to, uh, to their local uh, uh, tax uh, systems. Uh, we are not, we, we do not, we, we give this kind of advice. We do not give you exact advice yet uh, about how to declare your taxes in your home country. Um, another issue is value added tax or VAT. Um, to make a very long story very short is that if your company, if VAT, uh, if your company needs to become, uh, receive a VAT uh, number to register for VAT in Estonia, if your company uh, has the right to do that because VAT, getting a VAT number in Estonia is not a right, it is a privilege. And this privilege is assigned or given by the Estonian tax authority if company can prove that they actually need it. So if you need it, uh, if you have a justified claim that you need this number, then we can help you get it and we will handle the accounting for Estonian VAT. We will guide you if you need to pay, start paying VAT in another country. Uh, and we can guide you to uh, service providers who then manage your VAT filings outside of Estonia. Uh, and and you know, to make a one asterisk footnote first among many is that when I mentioned that salaries are not taxed in Estonia, then uh, if, if you pay yourself a board member's compensation for the work that you do as the manager, this indeed is taxed in Estonia, but this goes maybe too much into detail. And um, we have tax information on the FAQ page of our website and, and more uh, will be available soon. Just a quick thing to clarify, a couple of people asked, uh, is it mandatory to pay a salary or board member fee to yourself? Well, uh, yes and no. Let's say it is prohibited to disguise uh, salary payments uh, by way of dividends. So if you pay yourself a dividend every month, then this is not what you should do. Um, if you, if your company, the way the Estonian tax authority looks at this is that if the company has activities, somebody does something, somebody generates income, somebody wakes up in the morning and, and does something that is related to running the business or working, then that person should receive a salary that's that's the, the general answer if you ask me where is the league, where is the uh, paragraph in law that says every company needs to pay a salary to everybody every month there is no such point but if, if work is being done then work should receive salary mm -hmm. okay a uh, couple of questions about accounting uh, i will uh, divide them to two questions. First of all, uh, there are, is a question about your payment plans, uh, starting from which package uh, accounting is included. And another question was that, is it possible to be your customer and use your accounting service uh, or use some other accounting services or other way uh, being a customer of other service provider, but using your accounting services? The answer is yes, everything is possible. Uh, out of the four package, uh, our ultra light package uh, does not include accounting. Uh, 
So the ultralight package includes uh, serving as your contact point. It includes receiving your mail. Uh, and it also, uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's all it really uh, includes. And the, the remaining packages uh, all include accounting services. They are often um, limited with the amount of transactions that you have uh, by way of invoices. And if you are an e-commerce, uh, if you're an e-commerce seller, either on Amazon or some other uh, portal, or if you are a software as a service provider, meaning you have some software and people subscribe to your services and, 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 and pay on a monthly basis, then uh, the fees depend uh, a little bit on the exact nature of your business. So we have to look at your, your actual business and the way that we can uh, get data flows uh, in place. Uh, so this is, this is how we, uh, th these are the little bit of exceptions, but for most like consulting and sort of simpler businesses, freelancers, the packages are, are hopefully quite clear uh, on the website. And once again, ultralight package does not include accounting, all the other packages do. If you are, uh, you can be uh, uh, our ultralight client, meaning you, you take your contact ser point services from us and you take your accounting from someone else, that's perfectly fine. If you, uh, if you are someone else, if someone else is your contact point, but you wish to use us as your accountants, that's fine as well. Okay, I'll give you a bit of rest and ask some questions from Vivian in the meantime. Thank there you. is actually one question you can think of. Uh, if you need to cons compare e-residency hub uh, to Xolo, what would be your advantages or differences, let's say? Okay. Uh, anyway, Vivian, uh, once you pay in an amount of money in a TransferWise account, how many days does it take to clear? You are muted. There we go, got it unmuted. Uh, so that really does depend on which currency you're sending to. Um, but within TransferWise, when you do set up a transfer, you can actually use like our speed estimator to get a better understanding as to when the actual transfer might be received by the recipient. And uh, normally is about, it's pretty good accuracy on that within a few hours. Um, and it also does depend on how quickly you manage to fund your transfer to TransferWise as well. So we break it down into multiple stages. So there is the whole setting up of the transfer and the time from you to actually pay in the money into TransferWise. If you already have a balance account, you can just pay it directly from your balances. So there is no pay in time for that. And then the payout time does depend um, on which currency routes you are sending to, but our speed estimator will give you an estimation as to when that transfer will arrive. Okay. Uh, then let's see. Do you have debit card possibility for people living in Argentina or Uruguay? Unfortunately, you can't have that directly delivered uh, to uh, those countries. But as Martin mentioned, if you would like, you can use e-residency hub address as the delivery address for your card. And then you can use the forwarding service to receive the card in Uruguay or Argentina. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, for you, I will let you think. Uh, what could be the differences or advantages of TransferWise compared to LHV or other traditional banks you could think of a bit? Martin, do you have an answer to the you and Xola question? <laughs> I, uh, well, first of all, I think everybody on the marketplace is serving a united goal of, of, of serving the e-residency community and, and uh, there is really no one size fits all. And I, I send my warmest regards to Alan and, and the other people from, from Zolo in case they are watching. Uh, however, uh, I think we have a couple of advantages over Zolo. Uh, one of them is that Zolo has defined their client base as these Zolopreneurs. So if you're a one-man operation, then, uh, then you are their direct client uh, fix. But if you have uh, more than one board members, if you have more than one shareholders, then um, uh, we have an advantage. Uh, if uh, What we do is also we, we offer a very personalized service. So you will get a personal accountant with us 
to whom you can address if you have questions. So there is a, um, there is a, there is a face and the name and, and, and the person that is your contact point uh, throughout the time that you are, you, are, you are with us. And lastly, if you are in the business of uh, selling physical goods, um, e-commerce that is, then again, um, I don't think Zolo at the moment offers services to these companies. And also, obviously, if companies grow and need to add more shareholders or investors, etc., this is also when they sometimes come, come over to us uh, with always very fond memories of their spent time uh, with Zolo, of course. Okay. Um, one more general or philosophical question that kind of wraps up maybe most of the questions here. What is your experience or what, what do you think, what kind of businesses, what type of companies uh, uh, are benefiting the most uh, from e-residency or, or from EU company created by using e-residency? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, uh, we have an article about this on our website and, and uh, I'll be happy to uh, send the link to the people or put it in a follow-up email. But I, I think you benefit the most if you, uh, if you are, first of all, if your business is, 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 is online. If you manage a corner shop and you're selling cigarettes in Lisbon, then you know, doing this through an Estonian company doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're, if you're working online, then there is the point. If you are moving around, if you uh, travel a lot, if you prefer to have... Uh, uh, a lifestyle where you're not always put, uh, then uh, having a company in Estonia makes a lot of sense. If you're selling services uh, rather than uh, physical goods, uh, then it makes you know perfect sense uh, to do. Um, and if you know if if your business is an innovative, modern, uh, once again online. Uh, sort then uh, then doing this through this uh, Estonian option makes makes perfect sense. I think these are the uh, ones. And and lastly, uh, if you are in the growth phase, then the Estonian tax system, which allows you to not pay corporate tax until you start taking money out of your company. If you're growing, you are investing, or you're not even sure, you know how things are going to turn out in the long run then the Estonian tax uh, system, which is the most competitive tax system in the world, this is a, a, a official fact, I can send you the, the link about that later, uh, it is definitely beneficial. So uh, you pay corporate income tax only when things have actually, uh, well, when your ship has come in, things have worked out perfectly, you've made money, and you decide you're going to now benefit. This is when you pay the income tax, not uh, before when you're not even sure how things are going to turn out. So these are the, the main features, I think. Uh, and one more interesting question I found here is that at what stage you recommend uh, possible e-resident uh, to contact first time with a possible service provider he or she wants to use, whether after applying for e-residency, before applying for e-residency, already with a business plan, what's your recommendation? My recommendation is to do it uh, beforehand like uh, again uh, I think the article that I can refer you guys to it's it's on our website uh, at the article section uh, quite uh, explains in which types of businesses it does make sense uh, to do this via the Estonian e-residency plus Estonian company plus let's say account with transferwise model it's not always the case but if uh, if, if a person thinks it through uh, and comes to the conclusion that yes, this benefits me, you know, then it makes sense to do the next step and apply for a residency card and get started. E residency cards are nice to have, and being, being part of the community is, is also a benefit. But, but doing the business through uh, Estonia, uh, if, if you realize that it does make sense, both in terms of philosophy and in terms of money, uh, this is when it makes sense to actually get started. So get in, get in touch as soon as possible, but you should have an idea about what you want to do business-wise. Okay, thanks. Vivian, uh, two last questions for you. Uh, anything you can bring out uh, comparing your service to traditional banks, like for example, LHV? 
Yeah, sure. So I think one of the, the main differentiators is, is the ease and convenience. So a lot of the time when you want to open up uh, traditional bank account details, especially for a business, you might need to go into the bank branch to actually open up those details. Whereas as you saw with TransferWise, you can do it fully online and it takes a couple of minutes. Uh, yes, there may be some verification, but again, you can do all of that online. Um, also, I would highlight that really when it comes to anything to do with international banking, then with the likes of TransferWise, very different to the banks is that you'll always have your money converted at the mid market rate. So you'll always know that the exchange rate that you're getting is the best one. So you're not paying any hidden charges and fees on that. Um, also the fact that you can have multiple balance accounts within the one account and you can manage that very easily, whether it's on desktop or on mobile, that is quite different to uh, traditional banks that we've seen who may typically charge an additional sort of monthly fee for that type of uh, product solution, or you may need to have a minimum amount of money kept in those accounts at all times. Whereas at least with, with TransWise, we do have a one-time uh, fixed fee for just opening up those inter international account details for business. But aside from that, there are no other fees apart from when you convert between currencies uh, or also when you withdraw same currency into your bank account. So say for example, I had GBP in my GBP TransWise balance and wanted to withdraw it into my local GBP uh, bank here in the UK. There'd be a small fixed fee for that. Um, but aside from that, it's, it's free to, to use TransferWise. I guess another differentiator is really with traditional banks, you may have access to other products such as loan services, um, overdrafts, which isn't something that TransferWise currently provide. And I would say if you're really looking for more of an international banking solution, then that's where TransferWise can really help you there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the last one um, uh, about your cards is the question, is it possible to use them for paying online purchases? Yes, you can. So you can use your card for paying for online purchases. We actually have quite a lot of our business customers using that for when it's paying, for example, cloud services or specific invoices. And if there are more than one founder in the company or contact persons would is it possible to give them out more than one card? Unfortunately, at the moment, it's just one card per business profile. Okay. So uh, we are actually out of time now. So uh, we need to wrap it up. And the, there are still some unanswered questions. We definitely recommend to contact directly to e-residency hub or transfervice to get your specific uh, case specific answers. I saw a lot of questions regarding different uh, currencies. Uh, all the information is definitely available in the TransferWise website. Uh, what uh, currencies you can convert to each other or uh, ask some other additional questions. Then uh, another thing is that there are, there are some questions uh, regarding e-residency and uh, applying for visa to travel to Estonia or to get uh, residency or living permit. These two things are not connected. E-residency do not give you any guarantee that you will get a visa to enter to Estonia. They are managed uh, and analyzed separately. So uh, one thing is not connected directly to the other. So uh, uh, e-residency is strictly for, uh, for enabling online business so that you can do your operations uh, remotely. This is the main advantage of the e-residency. So in general, uh, this, uh, this area is, uh, is covered so that uh, living permit and uh, working in Estonia and, uh, and moving to Estonia, living in Estonia uh, are totally different things. However, if you are interested in, uh, in uh, applying for a job in Estonia, we recommend you to visit site work in Estonia. Uh, to get some more information or if you have a startup and thinking of moving your startup to Estonia then we recommend you to uh, get some more information about startup visa. So uh, there are plenty of uh, different uh, possibilities for, be, uh, for entrepreneurial people to be connected to Estonia in addition to e-residency. 
So I would love to thank you both of you, Martin and Vivian. For those who were reg registered in Zoom, you will get a follow-up uh, email with a link to the recording, as well as some uh, additional information, maybe some links, as well as presentations. Actually, there were, were none, none of the presentations. Yeah, you don't get the presentation. Uh, but uh, we recommend you to visit uh, e-residency hubs website, TransferWise website, definitely e-residency website, uh, read the knowledge base, there is a lot of quite uh, well written information about taxation, about the obligations of Estonian companies and so on. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, visit our event uh, calendar to see uh, when are the next uh, webinars coming up and, see, and visit our YouTube to see the, the webinars that have already taken place about taxation, about country and uh, language specific webinars. Uh, as well as about uh, also um, uh, some legal aspects of running the company in Estonia. Thank you for watching and uh, see you soon, hopefully. Thanks very much, Remo, Martin. Thank you for organizing and thank you all for listen, listening and um, drop us an email if you have questions. Thanks a lot.